And so, Father, we stand in this place you've given to us in your name. And for your name, we just stand to say we want to love you. The only thing we want is you. Please, Lord, give us experience of you. Everyone needs experience of you. Those who want you actually want you. Those who are not looking for you need you. You are the only substance of life. Please, Lord, reveal yourself in an experience with your encounter today. Holy Ghost, I trust nothing except your works in the Christ. That's the only way the Father will be glorified. Please, the Holy Ghost, speak clearly, speak directly, speak personally. Speak in experience, speak in encounter. And let somebody be processed through this service into the place of a permanent, life-changing, glorious experience in God, the Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. If that is your own, can you shout a living amen? amen. If that was your personal prayer, will you make your amen louder than every other one? Clap those hands like God is with you. Clap like God is with you. Hallelujah. Be seated. Glory to God. Your glory is mighty. Heavenly Father. And it fills the whole world. Merciful Father, your glory is mighty, heavenly Father. See how it fills the whole world. Merciful. Your glory is holy. understood mystery can only be experienced your glory is mighty heavenly firm, and it fills the whole God is mystery Mystery cannot be explained. Mystery can only be lived. Your glory is mighty, heavenly, firm, and it fills the whole world. Scientists. In some ways, admit of the mystery of the universe, the mystery of creation. And one honesty about science is the humility to accept ignorance. Because science constantly updates itself, talking about obsolete postulations and theories and assumptions. So, Newton. Newton physics is considered obsolete in many areas people are looking at me in many areas many areas yeah don't you don't need to agree with me many things that in years to come i mean in years past have been accepted as axiomatic about the universe have been proven obsolete and so science constantly update itself accepting insufficiency inadequacies and imperfection
There was a time the world was taken to be a flat, a flat saucer, that if you travel far enough, you will reach the edge and you will fall off. And then Copernicus and people like that, they just came and turned things upside down. So in every age, human knowledge fails. Why? The universe is just a bit of the revelation of the mystery and the immensity of the creator. So you can only experience it. You can try to talk about it. But human language ultimately fails. You can only experience it ultimately and live it. And accept that your language will fail you in explanation. Explanation, yes. As humans, we must make things intelligible. We must make things explainable. Understandable. But let's leave the realm of science, which is human, natural, imperiological. I'm sorry. Let's go into the realm of God. The totality and the perfection of mystery. So whatever we see in the immensity the awesomeness of creation and nature is only a tiny drop in the ocean of the mystery, the endless mystery that God is. So when it comes to God, the Bible speaks about God but does not say everything about God. Even then, what the Bible says has no power except in the place of experience. That God loves you is what you read. But until you experience the love of God, you cannot say you know the love of God. So God is mystery. And God is to be encountered and to be experienced. Everyone who ever encountered God became a different person, had a story. Abraham was just Abraham. And normal things about Abraham was normal or were normal until Abraham accepted the experience of God in his life. Noah was just one of the generation, one in a generation of perversity, of immorality and human wickedness until Noah had experience of God. So, it was not science that built the boat. It was the experience that built the boat. That is why the men and the women of the time of Noah, science did not give them any insight into what was coming. And so a man prepared a boat and there was no sense to it. Geography had nothing to talk about it. Biology had nothing. Geology had nothing. Physics had nothing. Phil philosophy had nothing. Psychology had nothing. Experience of God made a man daily walk on the boat. Until after a long time the boat was ready. And inside the boat, according to the scripture, they watched the whole world overtaken. I pray that God will no longer be a matter of imagination for you. I pray that God will no longer be a matter of quote, quoted words and recited words. I pray that the word will make flesh in your own experience. And that you will be able to see what is unseen. You will be able to hear what to everyone is on head. And you will be able to touch what to everyone is intangible. And you will become what to everyone is impossible. For experience will make you live an impossible life. I pray experience in your life. I pray experience into your life. I call experience out of your life. In Jesus name. Be seated. Chief you try telling me that the 
certain aspects of the physics of Newton is not outdated. Okay, go and check. Go and go and check all the new findings about science and physics. Is that okay? And sit down and study the theory theory of relativity and all of that and compare. You will see that what is obsolete it means it's been overtaken. And things are built upon new reality. Is that okay? So do some more studies. You are a scientist. I've never studied science. Do a lot of studies. You will discover that a lot of things that things were built upon have been overtaken by new findings. That's what makes science and human knowledge dynamics. I'm not here to argue with you. You are an electronic engineering. I am a student of mystery. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's talk about experience. Tell somebody, let's talk about experience. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Experience gives you a, a personal testimony and personal story. This week is marked out among all the weeks of the year. In the traditional circle in the Catholic Church and other mainline mainstream ecclesial community, the mainline ancient churches. From today, today is called the Palm Sunday in the Western, in the Western Roman Rite. Western Rite and calendar of the church that all of us Pentecostals and non-Pentecostals they follow they follow what is called Roman rite and sorry Roman calendar in terms of church in the Eastern Orthodox have little changes here and there but today is known to be Palm Sunday Palm Sunday means the beginning of the Holy Week beginning of the holy week so this week is called holy and it's the week that what could be called the most unholy experience happened when god was abused in the flesh rejected killed murdered in cold blood and the only reason is because he claimed to be the son of god to be the savior and they had to prove him and he died my death Almost all of you sitting down here, many of you come from different churches, many of you are Catholics, many of you, your parents were either Catholics, Presbyterian, Methodist, Anglican, and um, many who have been in different churches, new generation churches, moving from place to place. You've passed through moments and seasons and heard of the crucifixion of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and we pray the blood of Jesus, talk the blood of Jesus. I think that what remains for you, what you need is experience of the death of Jesus. There is no lacking in the preaching about the mysteries of the sufferings, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. There is no scarcity of that. Better preachers. I cannot claim to even have any qualification to claim to be anybody of any note in terms of knowing and talking about it. So my preaching has nothing to offer you. My preaching, my teaching does not have any difference to make in your life. The only thing is what only God can give experience. No pastor, on account of his knowledge and experience and years as a pastor, can make another man have experience of God. Only God can give you experience of himself. No father who is a pastor, the greatest of all ministers, none can give to the child, to the daughter, to the son, experience of God. 
only God can give. So God can give, will give, does give through the father, through the mother. But until the, God gives, a father, no matter how holy, cannot. Years back, I had an opportunity to, I had a very old friend, as at that time he was 85 years old. I will not mention his name because we are live on radio and some people may have known him. I worked in a certain place and all of that. So, But a prominent man who had seen years, a professional, retired, very knowledgeable, very intelligent. And we were great friends. Each time we met, he would talk and admire my, the grace of God in my life and showed me his history, his knowledge. Very wonderful man, very wonderful man had grown up children, many of whom are outside the country, and then later on married another younger, a younger woman. And then this younger woman had children for him. But these children, a lot of them were just strange children, strange guys, strange, of that, strange guys, cultists, made a very serious cultists among them, met free thinkers, just met people were very carefree and free in their thinking. And the mother, very pious, prayerful woman, very pious, very dedicated, prayerful woman. There is no place that there, there will be prayer on earth. The woman will not go and will just befriend you because there is prayer around you and all of that. Wonderful woman. And she wanted me all the time to talk to the children and these children really needed somebody to talk to them. I met a couple of them. Some of them just laugh at you. The very fact that you are a Catholic priest just will amuse them. <laughs> just amuse them. <laughs> very funny set of people. Very intelligent people. Very great guy. So one of them, whose name I will not mention, one of those just visited me. I had moved to another parish. And so he visited me to talk about his own life. And he made a statement very profound. These are very intelligent people. He talked about the effort of the mother to make him a Catholic priest. <laughs> talked about the effort of the mother of the parents to make him a Catholic priest. And he told me something. It takes more than the desire of a mother for one to be a Catholic, to be, for one to be a Catholic priest. I will never, I have never forgotten that line. It takes more than the desire of a mother. Isn't that true? It takes more than the desire, the wish. May you may hear me, I want this my son, I want this my daughter, I want this my this. It takes more than a desire of a mother for a, a man to be called by God, for a man to answer the call of God. It takes more than my father desired forever in his family that a priest would break. For him, a priest had to be a Catholic priest. And sincerely, God answered his prayer. He had a Catholic priest. I fulfilled all my father's intention as a Catholic priest. Then I retired. But it took, <laughs> it took more than the desire of a father. Because after my father had desired and prayed, had made all the covenant with God, he gave up. He knew it did not work. So the time I showed up and told him God had asked me to go to the seminary to become a priest, he told me, you are not that son, you are not that person. He just didn't believe it again. God wanted him to know that after you have prayed, after you have done anything, until I answer, I am the one who gives people experience. And God chose the most unusual of them. The one he said, this one, you know, for Woru, it's not you. <laughs> he said it's not you. <laughs> I said it's true. But I'm told I, I am the one. And if he lived, he would say, didn't I say it's not you? <laughs> I said, but you desired and I wanted a Catholic priest. And God gave you a Catholic priest. So it's written for you. He didn't go to a Catholic priest. Then retire. Then I can go back for another person. Can I tell you something? It takes more than the prophecy of the prophet for you to have experience in God. It takes more than the prayer of a prayer house. It takes more than the desire of a bishop, of, an, of a senior apostle. So it takes more than 
ecclesiastical ranks and titles for one. It takes more than eloquence in the preaching of the gospel. It takes more than knowledge of the sacred sciences of scripture for one to come into experience sir. until God gives you experience. The word of God remains theory. The word of God remains speculation. The word of God remains a distant stuff incapable of giving you personal story. Sir, it is God who bets experience in people's life. I am standing here today recognizing my insufficiency, my lack of capacity, my lack of qualification and inadequacy and frailty. I stand empty and I know one thing, that God can cause you to hear something different from what I said. And what you hear becomes an experience your life has been waiting for. That is why I am here today. That you will hear something. That you will see something. That you will know something. That you will touch something. And you will become something by the experience of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up and shout. Say, Lord, I want it. No, that's not what I expected. I want you to speak like you are angry and hungry. Even if you are not, pretend like you are. Shout, Lord, I want it. Be seated. I want to talk to you very briefly on the power of encounter. And then, preparing for encounter. Preparing for encounter. I have already told you. That one of the powers that encounter has is that it gives you authority on an authenticity. Authenticity. So authentic people are people with experience in spiritual things, in professional things. For those of you who work in the professional world, people can graduate from the best of universities and come into your space. And they are clueless because they don't have experience. People finish from the best of the college of medicine across the world and they walk into a theater in a real life situation. And they went to the best of schools where they, those who are standing in the theater will, will, have, will have dreamt just to sit down for one week in such schools but will not have opportunity. But showing up in the theater, you, you know one thing. Graduation from school is different from the experience of practice. Dr. Ekpotu affirms it. All the time you meet the young doctors who argue and know everything about, about medicine and a wonderful and firebrand. But when true life situation emerges, they are humble. You need experience. So when we talk about experience, it's not just spiritual, but since we are in a spiritual place and we are in the presence of God, we are talking about a spiritual experience that will change you as a doctor, change you as a lawyer and all of that. So you study law and graduate from the law school first class and the best results from that school. And you come into the chamber and you wear the way and you are so wonderful and your garment is is impeccable and you walk into a court sir you realize this is not classroom realize you sweat you forget your theories what is the difference between that and a man a man who just graduated third class many years ago very many years ago he does not even remember when he graduated and he speaks and the judge is, is a younger person to him and the judge will honor him just because he's there in the court and the judge talks in a particular way acknowledges him you know why? experience experience gives you authenticity makes you authentic and gives you authority sir, you can talk about blessing but the authority of blessing is experience when you are blessed, you experience blessing, you have authority to talk to somebody about the blessing. Until you are blessed, you don't have authority to talk about blessing. What is authority? Authority is the right 
the right to, the permission to do certain things. So, all that your life has been waiting for, all of you sitting down here, all of you, all of you sitting down here, all of you, what your life has been waiting for is what? Shout experience. Rise to your feet, lift up your two and say, Father, give me my own experience. Whether you need it or not, just shout. If you don't need it, ask for me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, give me my own personal experience. Pray for one second, for two seconds, for ten seconds. Pray for one minute. Give me my personal experience. I want it. I want it. Say, Lord, I want it. I want it. I want it. Want it. It's not the one who wills. It's not the one who runs. Is the one whom God shows mercy. When God shows you mercy, He gives you authority to talk about mercy. Kalabasha tatala, labrasonda katalaba. Say, Lord, give me authority to talk about blessing. Katala masi katalaba. Say, Lord, give me authority to testify. Landa katomasi kanda. Just as I will make you witnesses, you shall be Lekata. It means you shall have right to prove me. Say, Lord, give me my own experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Experience is a personal encounter that leaves a mark on you. Write it down. Experience is a personal encounter. That leaves a mark on you. Leaves a mark on you so that wherever you go to somebody, say, what is this? Oh, it was fire. I have a couple of marks on my body. <laughs> don't worry, I will not show you. So don't say, ah, don't talk about your body now. We are talking about the Bible. Don't worry, just telling you. I have a couple of max on my body until god calls me home i think my children have already started asking me daddy what is this mark daddy what is that mark they say grow up you will understand when i was 11 years old going to 12 years old 1981 i was 12 years old yes 1981 i was in class one i was in class one first term when what is called OU. I've asked doctors to tell me, Dr. Ipoto, what is OU? In English, they say SWAT, SWAT abscess, SWAT abscess, something abscess. One doctor decoded, says SWAT, some SWAT, something abscess. And that's all. I've not been able to master it, I will master it. It's okay. OU. But do you know there's something called OU? OU. You know it. Just that you don't, medical term of it, it's not in the medical. Is there? Okay, don't worry, we'll talk about it. There are different kinds of Oyo. There is Oyo Kbo. That's Oyo okay, bone. Bony Oyo. Oyo that operates in the bone. There is Oyo Freedom. That is general, all-purpose Oyo. Oyo that has permission to touch any part of your body. And there is a locational Oyo. Oyo that, that just looks for one part of your body, one location, and just Oyo. Just Oyo there. But whether it's Oyo or Oyo Freedom, or Oyo Idem Itiekit, Oyo, it has a mystery of pain. Have you ever suffered, anybody who has suffered Oyo here? Oh, praise God. Oyo. You see, we are few. Few of us have passed through Oyo. So I don't know whether my own was Oyo Freedom. But what I know is that it was only one part of the body. It didn't come out on any other. This side was okay. But this side, from the chest, the hand, the back, the leg, everything. And it was, that Oyo had one purpose, to enfeeble. So after the Oyo was done, I walked like this for a couple of times. Absolutely, I have walked like that before. <laughs> Oh, you've not known this one. Eh? Add it to my profile. <laughs> Absolutely. At the age of 12, Oyo sat on me. 
Then you sat on me. I discovered very early as a 12 year old that when the night comes, everywhere is quiet and then pain comes alive. So, night time, if you want to do anything serious, go to the night because things, things are sharp in the night. Absolutely. Serious things are done in the night. Pain destroy in the night. Destroys in the night. So I went through OU. By the time I, I, I went through, so the whole of second term, the whole of holiday of first term, the whole of second term, and the whole of the holiday of second term, I was going through OU. Third term, part of it I was able to manage through. How we, I was promoted to second to class two, don't ask me, because I don't know. But I know somehow I found myself in class two, and we continue. But the point is this, there is a proof that Oyo came to me. So I have marks. I have marks. That Oyo was such a very, very dangerous Oyo. Every time one part of it came out and I turned to another side to lie on, if I will lie on this side this night in the morning, Oyo will come out from that place. Absolutely. Just that those ones were not very dangerous. The one that wanted to do everything was one side. I don't know whatever that you wanted. Whatever it wanted, I think it had done. But it left me mark, deep marks on my body. Deep marks, sometimes cutting for the purse to come out. Sir, it was a deep thing. I have never forgotten it. I will never forget it in my entire life. Why? I went through it. Experience leaves a mark on you that is unforgettable. When you have experience in God, you can, no matter, even if you try to forget it, you cannot. I pray in the name of Jesus that the experience of God will leave marks on your body. Mark that will stand you out and cause you to testify personally in the name of Jesus Christ. So, as I'm speaking the word of God today, is my interest and my desire. I have prayed, is all I have prayed, is my crying that you will not hear me, you will hear God, that you will not see me, you will see God. That you will not encounter me you will encounter God in the name of Jesus Christ be seated a man told me some years ago in the early days of the school of the Holy Spirit he had been smoking helplessly for years he didn't know how to stop so as I was preaching one of those days he sat in front in the bomb hall to the left those days it, when he met me and shared with me why he came into the school of ministry and all of that. He said, I stood in front of him and as I was preaching, I just said, I take smoking from you from today. After that moment, the desire to smoke ended. The next time he tried to smoke, he could not smoke. He didn't hear me. He heard God. That was an encounter, left an experience. He's the young man that in the school of the Holy Spirit had to resign from his job. You know, I mean, in school of ministry, he had to resign from his job. One particular Equenyong, member Equenyong, he resigned from his job to finish school of ministry. And after that, God gave him a UN job. He's no longer in the country. One of the strange testimonies we have heard. Because one day, he came later and I dealt with him. And he said, God, if this is the only thing, I will commit myself to doing seriously and finishing. I will. So he went and left his job. If he told me, I would tell him, don't try it. Left his job, sat down there for months, going into a year. And one more than one year. The end of it, the UN job came. And I tested him. I said, ah, is this? Go and tell them to... 
to give you two weeks for you to respond. The UN job waited for him for another two weeks. He said, well, yes, we'll give you two weeks. Go and prepare and come. And he came to me. He said, they have given me two weeks. He said, go and prepare yourself and go. So he left the country. He doesn't talk to me. I don't need him to talk to me. But it's the man that I'm talking about. Standing in front of him and preaching. And I didn't know he was smoking. I said, I take smoking from you. I was just talking generally. But he heard me. He didn't hear me. He heard the spirit. And he had an experience. And smoking ended. Today, today, as I'm speaking, you will have an encounter that will leave an experience as mark in your life in the name of Jesus. It will be so. Why? It is the desire of God. Say, God is spirit. And those who will serve him, they will not serve him according to theorems and theories. They will serve him in spirit. When it comes to spirit, sir, now experience. Spirit is not one plus one is equal to two. The spirit is experience. Receive an encounter that will leave a mark of experience indelibly in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, sir. Experience answers questions. So many questions your life has been asking you. No man can answer that. So a lot of people come to me and say, Father, there is this problem I have, this question. I have asked men of God. Nobody has been able to answer me. I will not want to prove to you I'm better than any man of God by trying to give you an answer. The day you have an encounter, you will come out from an, with an experience that will make you a proof that that question has been answered. Receive it is a gift now in the name of Jesus Christ. A woman with a question you have asked and asked and asked. A man with a question you have asked and asked and asked. No seer, no prophet, no minister, no wise person has been able to give you answer. By the experience of the Holy Ghost, you will become the answer. If it, was to, if it was for you, you will have received it. So, I have talked briefly about the power of encounter. I'll be seated. Experience will give you a new strength and fresh start. Write it down. <laughs> Sir, when you have experience, life starts all over. <laughs> I say, when you have experience, what happens? Life starts all over. I'm standing here because experience has given me fresh start and a new beginning. Sir, this thing I'm talking about, these things are true. Like Job, I can tell you we have tested these things and we know it's true. Experience gives you a fresh start. In new strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31 is a very common scripture. But a few things that are uncommon there. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power. Say, He gives power. So when you are weak, God gives you an experience. Oh, glory to God. Sir, have you not heard that people receive treatment in the dream and wake up into perfect health? He gives. Say, he gives. In the school of the Holy Spirit some years ago, a woman in Ibom Hall talked about a woman that had all sorts of diseases and used to smell. She said she was so smelly that she would be in the midst of people and everybody said, mm, mm, what is meant? She knows she's the one. She was no longer ashamed of it. One of those days, after the session of the school of the Holy Spirit, she went. She said, layers and series and series, groups and badges of angelic beings visited in a, in a surgery. 
These ones will come with specialized ability to take out certain things. When they were done, another group will come. Another group will come. By the time she woke up, the smell, everything she used to go through, everything, everything that made her life miserable, ended after the surgery in the dream. <laughs> It took place in a dream. The dream of the night. But woke up into a life of fresh start. New beginning. That was an encounter. Left out with an experience. How do you tell doctor that, that you had surgery last night? He said, Benny Ribidi. Which doctor? He said, they were, it's like they were angels. Who so told you angels operate people? You will have experience. Let me give somebody a gift. By the same God. By the same God. By the same God. I ask that in the name of Jesus. Visitation. Visitation. That will give you. Physical strength. Spiritual strength. Emotional strength. Financial strength. Receive it by the encounter of the Spirit of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. God gives. Say God gives. Experience. I've told you in Ibom Hall a couple of times. Let me know if I bore you. Maybe for the benefit of those who are listening in on radio. And some of you are fresher. If you go and check in the records of Abad Diocese in the Catholic Church, there is a priest called Alfred Mwabasi. It's the first time I'm, I'm remembering his name. He was my senior in the seminary, senior by a couple of years. Alfred was a member of the Charismatic Renewal. I was a leader from the very early moments of my days in the seminary because of experience. So Alfred was there. Few, few seminarians and the charismatic movement. And, um, let's not talk about that. Alfred had a very serious attack. Very serious attack with his eyes. He's, he was going towards close to ordination. And we had had experience, a strange experience of some people that as they begin to get closer to ordination, they get all, all sorts of attacks. Also some accident, all sorts of things. All sorts of things. So this man had very, he will be from one sickness to another, always in the hospital, very sickly. And once you are like that, close to ordination, and you are like that, the tendency is to mark you down, that you don't have the required health. Because it is understood that for you to be a priest, a minister, you must be healthy. So it usually to disqualify. So he had one major problem with his eyes. His eyes went bad. And that was a no-no as he was getting close to ordination. I've shared this with you. He will pray for him in the, in the prayer meeting, pray for him and all of that. But he was going through all of these war glasses. Didn't make sense. Alfred Wabas, he slept one afternoon during siesta. Siesta in the seminary, I said, in my time, I don't know what is happening now. I left more than 20 years ago. <laughs> Compulsory, you must have siesta. Sleep in the afternoon. Whether you like it or not, you sleep. If you don't sleep, we'll bring you out to cut grass while others are sleeping. So he was sleeping in the afternoon. In the dream, he was taken out of the hostel in the dream and walked down. In Yanguro, Wankwo, we have a river, river that marks the boundary of the land of my seminary in Ikorok, a very popular river. He was taken down, down, down. We have pigri. In the seminary, her poetry, all sort of things close to the river. He was taken in a dream down close to the river to a particular leaf, a plant. Somebody guided him down there. Told him, take this plant, took this plant, and you will squeeze it and put the ointment of it in your eyes, and your eyes will be sound. He woke up that afternoon and started walking out. He walked down. The way he was guided, went to that spot, 
saw that plant, took that plant, came back to the hostel, got an ointment out of it in his eyes. That was the end of the story. Experience. Experience. He said, have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Isaiah 40, 28. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives. He gives. If you have not yet received it's not because he does not give. It's, that it's because you have not yet had the experience. Today, as we enter into this holy week, when we are expected to come for an experience, receive what he gives in the name of Jesus. And when he gives, doctors go on sabbatical in your case. When he gives, those who stood at the door and swore you will never pass, they become those who open the door for you. When he gives, those who swore and say, over my dead body, they become the facilitators of your next level. Receive what he gives. I say receive what God gives in the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus! Experience. Experience. Sir, God gives experience. God gives experience. God gives experience. God gives experience. It is not the scripture that keeps me. It's my experience in the scripture. Harobrunanda. It's not a word that I, I read in the Bible that keeps me. Sir, it's my experience of the world. Yes, he told me in the word when I was preparing to resign. He said, you will not go in a haste. I will go ahead of you and I will be your rear guard. I understood one thing. Nothing will attack me from the rear. And nothing will stop me in front of me. He said, you shall not go in a haste. So, because of that, people have been walking with me. People like Chris and a few other people. When they say go, I say he has not yet told me to move. Because he told me you will not go in a haste. So, when the time comes, I know he will go ahead of me. And he will be my rear guard. That means whatever comes after me. He said, young, young boge me and yeah, young boge double yeah, young boge mumu yeah. No, when you come, that scripture is an experience. It's my rear guard. So I am. I don't look at my back. No, I don't. I don't go for many. I don't go for ministry and worry about my back. Oh, what is going on at home? What is, I am aware that one is my rear guard. But receive what He gives in the name of Jesus. He gives. He gives. If you have not yet received, it's not because he has not given. It's because you have not yet experienced. So this week is the week of experience. He gives. Power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. He can increase the strength of the womb. He can increase the strength of the sperm of the man. It can increase the strength of the liver that is failing. It can increase the ability of the heart that can no longer pump blood. It can increase the ability of the eyes. Oh, it gives. Receive it in the experience of the spirit. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord. Why shall they have new strength? Because God shall give them. Why will they mount up with wings like eagles? Because God shall give to them. Those who wait on the Lord. Why will they run and not be weary? Because God gives. 
old men they shall walk and not faint men when God gives you you run and you are not tired sir I'm talking about spiritual energy not talk. there is the power there is a red there is a red horse there is a, a, a bull there is there is a spiritual energy of God that when he gives you the tax you started and you felt like giving up and you receive the energy boost of God you go back and overcome you will go back from this week and overcome you will go back and prevail you will go back and accomplish you will go back and break through you will go back and go through why he gives you will go back and expand you will go back and extend he said lengthen your cord and expand the place of your dwelling he gives he will not tell you to go and expand without giving you the strength to expand. Lift up your two hands. Say, I receive the experience of God. God. Listen. Hallelujah. Mm, I have seen too much to doubt. There's some way, somehow, every season. You are. Sir, can I tell you something? If the experience doesn't come to you, go to experience. Kalasha katala labra. Experience now, experience. Whether it comes to you or you go to it, all that matters is that you have an experience. If you have waited for too long for the experience of a fresh start, if you have waited for too long for the experience of a new beginning, then it's time to pack your bag. It's time to get your things. Say, so, I am coming. I am coming. I am no longer waiting. No longer waiting. No longer waiting. I'm no longer waiting. I am no longer waiting. Experience. Ian Abasi, Ian Abasi, come here. Ian Abasi, shed in the school of the Holy Spirit. Bring a microphone. Ian Abasi, you want to share it here? Have you changed your mind? Give a microphone. Let us share an experience. An experience. Be seated. Give a microphone. So, sir, experience makes you realize that what you call ordinary is not ordinary. Let's talk about the experience, the encounter with me praying here on this altar. Say it briefly. Her name is Iyana Basi. She's my daughter. She, praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Her name is Iyana Basi, my daughter. I've done the introduction. I've done praise the Lord. Go back. Go straight up. Um, I, I had lump in my breast. And it was painful. I don't really know what it was, but 2019, I lost my elder sister through breast cancer. So, some months passed, I started having that severe pain and, and lump in my and left you breast. you lost your mother? Yes, I lost my mom as a result of the death of my elder sister. Yeah, the mom died because the sister died of breast cancer, so the mom could not stand the shock and died. Okay. So a few months back, I started having the, the pain and lumps in my breast. So when we came, I've been coming here praying. So that, that day, that morning, School and, of the Holy and it Spirit. And it was paining and it will bite you, like yes, you said. Yes, yes, Father. Uh, Dr. Ekbo, you, you have an experience of things like that. Lumps and they will bite, like like electric shock and all of that. So she started having that. Don't tell me any name. Continue. So that morning, I came very early on a Saturday morning, School of the Holy Spirit. I was, nearly, I was praying. I came and met Father at the altar praying. So I knelt down there. I was praying. So I went into a trance. It was just like... While I was praying and she was praying that she fell into a trance. Okay. So I went into a trance. Father walked up to me with a so dress. I, in was... that trance, I walked from the altar to where she was. 
Yes, and he told me, Iene, lay your hands there on the breast and pray. Lay your hands. Rise up and lay your hands and pray in a trance. So I got up quickly and I laid my I started praying. So from that day, from that day, the lumps were gradually going, gradually going, gradually going. And as and I'm standing the down, pain, the pain, what the happened pain to the was pain? gone. As I'm here right now, everything is gone. I'm okay. No, you cannot, you don't celebrate, you don't understand this pain. You don't understand this pain. Experience. So, I pray here. A lot of people see me pray here. Sometime, anytime, and all of that. But one person, she was praying, and she had a problem. And they fear that the sister died of cancer of the breast is enough. It's enough. And the mother died out of that shock. And then her own started with all the pain. And I was praying, and she was praying. She fell into a trance. And in that trance, I walked down and told her, lay your hands on the breast and pray. She woke up, the pain disappeared, and the lump began to shrink and to disappear. As she stood there, she said she shrinked. There was no lay. I didn't meet her physically. She, she never told me she had it. She never. She's my daughter. She never told me she had anything like that. There are a couple of other things we've been working on. But that one, not mentioned. What happened was, it's called what? Experience from an encounter. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? It gives. For everything you see, there are more things that you don't see. And it is from the things you don't see that God gives. Today, God is giving you. He's giving you in an experience. Business idea. Ministries, marriages, halabos. He gives. He gives. That was an experience that came to her. But there is another experience. So if experience doesn't come to you, what are you going to do? No, no, tell me, let me hear. If experience does not come to you, what are you going to do? Be seated. Let's finish this case and move on. Mark chapter 5. Verse 24 to 34. Mark, 35, Mark 5, 24 to 34. So Jesus went with him. A man came and talked about the dead daughter, somebody that needed healing. He said, okay, I will go with you to raise the person up. And so Jesus went with him. And a great multitude followed him and thronged, surrounded and pressed him. On every side. Now a certain woman. Say a certain woman. Many years ago I wrote a, a, a message. Those early days on the radio. We used to, I wrote down every message. And I talked about the faith of a certain woman. That's the title of that message. The faith of a certain woman. And I went. God gave me insight into understanding. I was probing. If people like Magdalene were named Mary Magdalene, we have a couple of people in the scripture because of the importance of the, the importance of their story and the faith that others will receive from their story. Their names were identified. And also when people like Bartimaeus, a blind Bartimaeus, Zacchaeus, people received salvation, they had names. And I also went into all that pe few people. Lazarus had name. I went into studying other people who had major encounters in the Bible. But their names are not given. And this woman stands foremost among them. 
And the Holy Spirit gave me insight that this woman is called Satan woman as a space, a blank space so that any man or woman can become the person. So the woman is not given a name so that your name can fit in. That was many years ago. So every time you meet an encounter in the scripture and nobody's name is there, it is your name. It's your name. Yeah. It's your name. Praise God. So this one, you can hold it. A certain woman, certain woman, had a flow of blood for 12 years. Satan woman. Satan. Certainly, there is a woman. Just that there is no name. And because there is no name, you know, certain women have names that men can share. Like worry them. Like faith. Faith can be a woman. And in case you have an issue, you can also adopt. My name is Faith also. The scripture says in Christ there is neither male nor female. That's it. So it's Satan. Say Satan woman. So that space is left for you. So that Adia Udo can enter. Had a flow of blood for 12 years. Next verse. And had suffered many things from many physicians. Thank God not my brother. Not a poto. She had spent all that she had and was no better. But rather grew worse. When she heard, say heard. That's it. She heard about Jesus. Jesus was, by the way, going to give somebody experience. But she heard. And she, while Jesus was going, she was going to her own experience. That's it. That's it. So there is a space for everybody. If you are too ugly for him to see you, then go for, go for him. If you are too short for him to see you, climb to the tree. So there is no excuse. Jesus is a promise. He will save. When she heard about you, she came behind. She came. Experience had been, she had been looking for experience. Jesus went about healing people. The son of the widow of, the, of Nain who died. They didn't look for Jesus to heal. That they didn't even know about Jesus. The experience of raising the dead went. Raised the widow's son. And the widow's son stood up. Went back to the city with the mother. But this woman, experience was not coming her way. In case you have been waiting for experience. In case you have been sitting, you have heard people's stories. You have heard people healed. You have heard people's, people change. You have heard people turned around. You have heard people lifted. And it has not come to you. You have heard people forgiven. You have heard people transformed. You have heard people changed. You have heard people blessed. You have heard people lifted. You have heard people promoted and honored and, and appointed and, and exalted and, and favored and, and blessed and all of that. Then it's time for you to come. Go looking for him. She came behind him in the crowd, in the crowd and touched his garment. Next verse. Next verse. For she said, this is what she said, before she came, if only, I know this man doesn't know me, but I know this man will help me, if only. I know the, I am too filthy, dirty, and smelly for the attention of this man. So I don't want this man to touch me. All I want is this man. If he does not touch me, if only, if only, if, if only I touch, I don't want to touch his body. I'm told he's the holy son of God. I don't know what God will do to somebody who touches his son. But I know those garments were not made in heaven. They were made here on earth. Let me touch our thing. That one is our earthly thing. The body came from heaven. But those clothes were made in these villages. Let me touch the clothes. Let me not touch the hands. Since the hands don't want, the hands don't want to touch me, I will touch the cloth. He has not looked for me. I have heard that he went 
minds about doing good, healing everyone, suffering from every disease. How we went about changing people's story, but he has not come to me. I have been suffering for 12 years. I have been going through this. Dr. A did not help me. Dr. Z did not help me. The other doctor abused me. The other one defrauded me. If only I can touch. I don't want him to see me. I just want to see his garment and touch. I don't want to be an apostle. I don't want an ordination. I don't want to be recognized. I just want to touch his clothes. And if I shall touch his clothes, the experience I have been waiting for, the experience that changes, the experience that heals, the experience that raises, the experience, the experience that turns things around, the experience that resurrects, the experience that resists, the experience that restores, the experience that rejuvenates, the experience that elevates, the experience that heals, the experience that cleanses, the experience that turns around, the experience that reinvents, the experience that gives a fresh start, the experience that gives a new beginning, the experience that gives a new name, a new identity, a new testimony, a new authority. I just need that experience. Lord, don't touch me. If you don't want to touch me, but I will touch you. Wait for me. If you are going there, I am coming to you. If you are returning from there, I am coming for you. If you don't see me, I will see you. I have heard that no man commit unto me except the Father draws him. And I will not cast anyone away whom the Father has drawn to me. I know you shall not cast me away. So I come, I come, I come to touch. Lord, I have been waiting for too long. Experience has not come to me. Experience I am coming. If experience has not come, then look for experience. Ah, if it is on the mountain top, look for it. Verse 29 Immediately the fountain of, of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. So Jesus is still living in human vessel and walking around. We have seen from Ian that your own can come anytime. If she did not come out that morning, if she had not come out that morning, if she came after I had finished praying, it would be a different thing. You see, there are so many people there are so many reasons why so many people die in their conditions. They sit down and wait for it to come. They don't show desperation. And when they show desperation, they show desper desperation with a man who cannot help them. They take men of God more, than, more seriously than they take the God of men. They take prophets more seriously than they take the God that this prophet prophesied. So you see people take, show desperation to wrong people and in wrong places. Desperation to see this man or that man. But no desperation to see God. This is what this come of this week is about. Desperation to see God. Desperation that will make you lie down on the floor. Desperation that will make you eat just little or nothing desperation that will make you take baths in a bush a desperation that will make you say after all is it not one or two days after this it is over sir if it doesn't come to you this week I give you the two later word that I was given last week after the event in order go go I was told I woke up from that revelation. I told you bits of it last year. 
last week I was given two letter word go so a release go sir if experience has not come go 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 for experience go and seek him go and touch him even now this come Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday into Sunday the resurrection go Eli told Hannah go go you didn't show that desperation before me you showed it before God go and the scripture says she went and Elkanah met Hannah and Hannah returned with pregnancy rise to your feet Distracted, raise your hand, close your eyes. And the affair, and said, I Hands lifted, eyes closed. If you don't come to me, I will come to you. Let your hands lifted be a sign of reaching out. I'm reaching out for help. My help shall come from the Lord. The help that will preserve me from famine. In famine. The help that will keep me from the avenger.
People are being pulled out of pits, pulled out of graves, pulled out from the water, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out, pull them 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 out. to the barren he gives strength he gives encouragement he gives sight to the blind he gives he gives he gives thank you thank you as a child of God begin to, begin to renew your dedication say Lord I will serve you this heart will serve. Somebody who needs to reconcile with God. Somebody who needs salvation. Somebody who has not yet experienced salvation. Say, Lord, I turn my heart to you. I turn my spirit to you. I turn my life to you. Turn my heart from sin. Confess sin, any sin, any sin, any sin. And as a child of God, the familiar sin that holds on to you closely. The scripture talks about it in Hebrews. The sin that holds tenaciously familiar ways of bringing you down. Repent, turn it to the Lord. So I hand over this part of my life, my emotion, my sex life, my relationship. I hand over my business life, my physical life, my health, my eating habits. Receive mercy. As you confess sins, mercy. Mercy is a song. Receive. He gives mercy. He gives mercy. He gives mercy. <sighs> Receive the gift of salvation. Call that name Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, come into this life. Come into this life. Come into this life. Come into this life. Say, I give this life to you. Come into this life. I give this life to him. I give this life to him. As you're walking about doing 
as you're walking about do you as you as you are walking about do you As you're walking about do you as you're walking about as you're walking as you're walking about freeing captives as you're walking about healing the sick as you are walking about changes As you are walking about changing names As you are walking about lifting burdens As you are walking about breaking news Who is looking for him? Who is desperate to see? Who is talking to him? As you are walking about doing As you are walking about As you walk about baptizing in the Holy Ghost Do not forget anyone Do not forget the barren Do not forget those with an hormonal imbalance Do not forget those with Halabosh Do not forget, do not forget Do not forget the one who has been waiting do not forget my daughters. Do not forget my sons. Do not forget my business children. Do not forget those in government. Do not forget those who have been waiting. Oh, as you are walking about doing good. As you are walking about doing good. As you are walking. forget the one with cancer do not forget the one with cataract do not forget the one with you took the pregnancy do not forget
Do not forsake them, oh my king. Do not forsake her, oh my Lord. Do not forsake me, oh my Lord. Do not forsake me. Do not forsake me, oh my Lord. Do not forsake me, oh my Lord. Your doors are open. 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 Your doors are open for good. Your doors are open for promotion. Your doors are open for favor. Your doors are open for light. Your doors are open for breakthrough. Your doors are open for salvation. Your doors are open for recognition. Your doors are open for life. Your doors are open for abundance. Your doors, your doors are open. Your doors are open. You could lay your hand anywhere and God is healing you. Are great, yes, you are. Oh, God is healing the singer. You walked upon us and you raised the dead, and then you raised in majesty. Oh, everything written about. Yes, you are great. Yes, you are. Oh. You walked upon the sea. See how you raised the dead. You reign in majesty. Everything. Everything is you. You are great. You are great. Let's worship and let's worship. You are great. Oh, you. You are great. Demons tremble at your what a man 